Well done on the gun today, Michael. Very, very disappointing for Tony to go down, but uh, we had you as a backup ruckman. How did you go? Yeah, I guess um, one man's misfortune is another man's fortune, and that's uh, definitely what happened. Uh, the rucks are probably not a favourite position. I don't mind running around the ground so much, but the actual ruck kind of uh, contests are a bit challenging for me sometimes. But uh, luckily, there was a pretty small fellow I could ruck against, so it was alright. It's a good opportunity for you two to get into the into the midfield. You don't yeah. mind running through the midfield now and then. Yeah, don't mind a bit of running. You know that, Millsy. Um, so just get a few more minutes in there. That'd be uh, great. I think. We obviously had probably our, our best uh, quarter, I think, for the year in the second quarter. Yeah. What happened in the first 15 minutes of that third quarter? We really fell away. What, what do you think happened? Well, I was pretty back to that second. It was the best quarter. I did kick two goals, I'm pretty sure. So yeah. that probably helped a little bit. And then um, The question <laughs> was focused, though, on where we, where we went wrong in that third quarter. Um, I don't know. I think we were always a bit slow out of the gates after the, uh, the half-time break. And um, I think we were pretty kind of happy with that position after half-time. We're usually not in a good position at half-time. We might have relaxed a little bit and Morningside came out hard, but um, to the boys' credit, I think we did well to still band together and finish it off. Certainly on the last quarter. I think the other thing that we, we recognised in the box is that Morningside were, were up and about in the first part of that um, third quarter. Yeah. You know, the blokes like Mugovan, Bonnie, Shelton, they really lifted in the first half. I think if we can get our players to somehow maintain that consistency or bring that consistency into the, into the, into the yeah. second half. I think. Um, with our better players, our ball magnets, like our Gillylands and stuff like that, you know, they get their heavy tags. So maybe in the second half, we try and look for, to break that tag for them a bit more and try and put the blocks on so they can get free and do what the Sheltons and Bonnies do and stuff. Yeah. And Gavin Gross moved forward today. Uh, what, was the, what was the team's reaction and how do you think it went? Oh, he's just an awesome player. Can't wait till he gets drafted this year. Can play either end, can go ruck. He's, um, he's the ultimate utility, I think. And, uh, that, uh, that big left boot of his, geez, it can do some damage. We can, it can. Well, look, we were, we were certainly worried. You know, you move Gav forward, obviously it takes away your fullback. Uh, we were concerned about uh, the Mugovan and Aby uh, combination. Uh, but I'd have to say, yeah. Cam Berners-Gani, what do you yeah. think of his job on Mugovan? <laughs> Great game. How many did Muggsy get? Wouldn't have got that many well, at I think Muggsy would have kicked three. I haven't seen the statistics yet, but, but just Cam's efforts on him, I thought were fantastic. Yeah, especially in that last quarter too, where it's kind of do or die stuff. Um, he definitely did well. I think, um, I think our general kind of back six backline players playing for each other worked well today. There was a bit of support, I think, and I think we just yeah all played as a united team for a change. Sometimes we play a bit kind of one on one in the backline. Some of our youngsters coming through. I mean, Fraser Newt who was an under 18 player last year. Yeah. Uh, he's now come up and he's now this is his fourth game today. How, how did you see his game? Doesn't, today? Doesn't seem like his fourth game, does it? He's just straight in there, big mouth on him, confident player, but um, just does the job every week, and tagging a player and gets under their skin and does it really well. He does, he's played on, played on. you know, that's his fourth game, he's been in the best three times in a row, and probably today he might sneak in there. Uh, he's playing on the premier players in the competition. What did you think of Bonnie's game? Um, I think he played all right, but Fraser did a great job on him, um, got under his skin, and then Bonnie just started, you know, Using his mouth a bit, we gave away a few free kicks. There's a shot on goal right in there that he gave away. But I think Nietzsche's probably ready to start um, kind of thinking about his own footy a little bit too, I reckon. Well, I think he did that against Aspley when he played on Buchanan in the first quarter. He really did play his own game and then he sort of pulled it back to realise, no, no, it's purely a defensive role. But he, you're right, I think if we can loosen him up and let him play a bit of his own game as well. Yeah, just um, follow that good player, take him to the right yeah. spots and then just go from there kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely, but he's, he's certainly been a somewhat of a revelation and he's, he's worked really well, so good night tonight. What are you wearing for the uh, V-Notch, Michael? Um, uh, it's a tough theme, the old V theme. I'm tossing up to the vacuum cleaner and a vampire, so... Oh, true. Yeah, very good. How do you do the vacuum cleaner? Just... I do know how. Barry O'Brien showed me after Mad Monday one day. But, uh, good luck, mate. Well done today. Cheers, Paul. Same to you.